right. Um, my name is Coleman McCormick. Uh, I'm here to talk today a little bit about an app called Pushpin that we built uh, about eight months ago. Um, we released it about eight months ago. An iOS app for doing mobile editing of OpenStreetMap data. So I, a little background about myself. I'm a geographer of a company called Spatial Networks in uh, Florida. We do a lot of human geography analysis work, uh, field data collection, and mapping tools for, uh, for doing field data collection. So uh, what is Pushpin? It's basically a simple, it's designed to be simple, mobile, street, mobile open street map editor uh, for iOS devices, iPads, and iPhones. Uh, designed to be specifically easy and super fast, but enable you to do uh, as much editing from the field as we possibly can enable you to do. Um, so why build another editor? There's already ones out there that exist for, for mobile clients. Um, mobile editors, a lot of people that build editors tend to just build them in the kind of same design patterns that the desktop editors are built in. They edit key value pairs and tags and that's just not fast enough or not intuitive enough for a lot of regular people who are going to download this off the iTunes <coughs> or on their device. Um, it's not friendly for running OpenStreetMap mapping parties and things like that. That's what one of the driving factors for building this for us was being able to use it on our own community growth and get uh, regular people able to, to contribute some data as well. Bushman tries to make it a lot more realistic to actually use this tool while you're wandering the street or in your car or something, uh, adding data. So we started with a few uh, design principles. Editing should be first and foremost fast. If you're walking around building to building, doing some editing, standing there in front of a building for 15 minutes each time is just, you're not, you're gonna get bored with it and you're not gonna actually wanna do it. You should be able to add and edit these features in seconds, not Again, not you know, take a long time. Uh, changes need to be accurate and precise, concise, because the OpenStreetMap tagging scheme is very specific. You know, the letting user type, as Tom showed it, ID, just typing in key value pairs creates a lot of variety and chaos in the data. It's not good for the actual uh, data set. So what we do in Pushpin is for things like addresses, we try to. It uses, using the OpenFast API, it looks around you to see when you edit a street name, like what's on the left there, it'll auto-detect street names in the vicinity of other features to try to try to uh, nail it down onto a single canonical spelling of the street name or whatever uh, or with the local existing data. Same thing with cities, as is shown there on the right, and zip codes too. Those sort of things. And also, the, this is probably the most important, is to keep it super simple and not expose the user to any of that, you know, chaotic looking key value tagging stuff that you see when you go to the map features page on the wiki. And it's this 10 mile long wiki page. Nobody, no regular human being would ever read that. So we, we try to uh, build in feature types into a drill down kind of pick list, series of pick lists with the search feature to let you drill into the exact feature type you want to add in. I can't even remember the tags, and I've been doing this for years. So how it works, you, you basically start off, you open the app, you download that button in the top left corner, you download the existing data so you don't create duplicates of it. Um, you can highlight closed ways like buildings and ponds and things to add attribution to. Um, and you can add point, new points if they're not already there. You pull up a feature, and it shows you just a basic form interface, not you know, not just here type in the key value uh, tag. It has a, a nicely presented uh, series of, of fields that you walk through. And then once you've you know, you, uh, made your edit, you save your edit to the map. So this background on this little bit is, uh, it's based on a commercial, some of the code is based on a, our mobile field data collection app called Fulcrum uh, that we've been working on for a couple of years that we use in our own, uh, in our own data production work and field data collection work, as well as make it available uh, commercially. And the form, the actual form you see when you open Pushpin and create a new point is designed and maintained inside Fulcrum, so we use that to, to actually build out that 
what fields we want to include in the pushpin map. So the form builder basically has simple drag and drop elements where you can design these forms and set actual the real one of the real powerful things with <coughs> pushpin is this notion of conditions that present you certain attributes based on what you enter. So in these conditions, certain things only show up at certain times, just like in, in ID. It allows uh, the most, the maximum level of detail to be entered without having to remember what are all the possible things I could add while I'm standing at this point. So collection times, you can enter for post boxes, but not anything else. Um, cuisine shows up for places that serve food and restaurants, and building heights only show up when you're editing a building structure, et cetera. So, this is what that form actually looks like inside of our fulcrum application, uh, just a web interface. So we build this out, and then the Pushpin app actually uses this to, to build the, the form that you see on the mobile app. And this has enabled uh, the main point of my talk. That was just an intro. And I wanted to get into the stats of what we've seen uh, as far as editing and usage of the app since we released it back in October of last year. Um, it's enabled communities all over from experts and actually far more casual users to make contributions where they otherwise couldn't have uh, in pretty good, pretty uh, high volume. So some statistics. Uh, this is real time uh, information. So there have been over 42,000 edits made with Pushpin. That includes completely new data been added uh, that's not existing on the map and additional information added to existing uh, OSM features. And in the last 24 hours, there have been 250 edits. And if you actually have a stats page, you can look at that shows real-time statistics based on based on the change set data from uh, from us now. And 797 unique users have actually contributed using Pushpin, made an edit, not just logged in and made an account. They've actually made a change to some data uh, with, from the mobile uh, application. And this is spanning 97 different countries. In this, I, I kind of broke down edits per country to see uh, which countries had the most activity uh, going on. Japan, some of our friends from the OSM Japan community are here. They've gone absolutely crazy using Pushpin editing all over the country, um, blowing us out of the water as far as uh, field data editing. Um, So this, uh, I made a couple maps here to show edit density. So this is Tampa Bay area where I live. This is our community there, myself and the other members of our local community and the kind of density of the edits that have happened with Pushpin. I live down here so you can see it's pretty. <laughs> um, but all over the, all over the area, um, DC, pretty good detail down in the, uh, downtown DC and then through the corridor here. And then San Francisco edits all around the Bay Area here. And then Tokyo is by far the most edited city with Pushpin. Um, and this is just, not just Tokyo, but the whole, all of Japan, all over, uh, has been edited a great deal. So, um, some more detailed stats. There have been 26,000 brand new features created uh, from Pushpin and 13,000 plus have been modified so some way had more detail added to it or a building or a, a you know, relation. And on newly created data, there's been 75,000 unique attributes added, so names and you know address information and that sort of stuff. We built this chart too that you can see on the website of edit history per, by day, see the activity as it, as it happens. Um, right around the early part of 2013, late 2012, we released a pretty substantial update that allowed a lot of new, uh, of new <coughs> types to be um, um, And I broke down some of the top tags that are, that are actually added from the mobile app. Names, obviously, but also uh, the amenity tag, the shop tag shows up a lot. Uh, and house number, it, it, this is one of the most powerful things. One of the biggest missing features, or big missing pieces of the data in OpenStreetMap is the actual address data. As Martin pointed out in his opening talk, 
that enables things like local search and routing and things that have been historically not really possible, at least at the scale of the street map. The different types of amenities that are added regularly, I mean, restaurants clearly, uh, post boxes, ATMs, park benches, bike racks, all sorts of stuff. And then shop types. So, <coughs> snapshot of that. so then, what's next? What are we planning to do next with Pushpin? Localization is a huge thing. Um, our friends in Japan actually already translated it. We just don't have it implemented in the mobile app yet. But we want to be able to actually have the interface translated into many languages from the And then, We've been trying to make time to do this for a long time, but be able to do an open source Android client, either through PhoneGap or some you know, even native, uh, it's a hard problem. But then release it as open source, so then it could be just like ID taken, modified, you could make custom specific apps for editing specific types of things, um, instead of just a global you know, uh, editor. There's some links. This presentation, I'll, I'll tweet a link out to it. You can see these links. But I made, uh, as part of this, break down all these stats. I had to use the change set data and kind of manipulate it into the database to be able to do some analytics on it. So I made a little script to do some of that stuff. And then the data itself that I included in this presentation is available too. So thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me or question was, is the iPhone app open source? It's not currently because it includes a lot of our our uh, commercial app code within it, but we want to be able to, we need to decouple some of that stuff from it and then we'll want to release it as open source eventually too. Yeah? Uh, for technical reasons right now, uh, mm -hmm. like a yeah, the question is about custom presets, like tags that aren't currently in there. One part that will help that is if it's open source, we could actually build a preset, you know, kind of language where you could add your own preset options. But um, we do want to build that into to be able to do that. There's just a lot of things to detect. Is it conflicting with some other data that's been entered? That's a lot of the work that went into designing this. But, yeah. Yeah. Do you have a set of tag presets? Most of what we did to, to determine this set of presets that shows up in Pushpin was to, to look at the wiki, to look at what's edited in tag info and see kind of the frequency of tags and how things are mapped to try to get it right. And we've made some changes to it over the months and, and weeks to where we've discovered that a tag, we had it spelled wrong or something in the app and it went and actually changed it. But um, mostly what we've done is just looked at kind of the community consensus <coughs> of how things are mapped and use those as the tags for the presets. But I see where you're going, like to be able to coordinate more with across editing tools with the set of presets available on how things are mapped. Yeah, that's something we're interested in too. Other questions? Yeah. No, I can't. No idea. We want to work on it soon, but it's this has all been done in kind of free time. So it's uh, whenever we get around to it, basically. Yeah. Does the um, system do auto look up of land use values? How does the land use work? Uh, it works just like we have a. We have a buildings, uh, yeah, she had, the question was how does the land use uh, attribution work? So we have, just like with buildings or with other, uh, with other feature types, we've looked at kind of what's the most frequently used categories uh, for land use and included those in there as presets. So if you edit something that is a pond or something that is a, has a land use tag, um, you'll see the presets that show up there. But, just like everything else, it's prescribed in the app. You can't add your own custom ones. But we just try to use the most frequently used ones so that, um, so that you can edit as many things as possible. 
Anyone else? Yeah. Have you thought of doing anything with the uh, sensors on mobile devices besides just centering the like uh, the question was about sensors on the mobile device. What, um, like, what type of sensors? Uh, yeah, the the app uses the onboard device GPS to to zoom to your current location, and kind of it kind of assumes that you're editing where you are because it's meant to be used from the field. But there's no there's no integration with any other sensor types to do any data collection like that. Yeah. Uh, along with that question. Uh, is it the iPhone GPS uh, where you give back the elevation you mentioned, like going high to the super on the top of the building? Yeah, the question was about the iPhone GPS and elevation data that comes back from the GPS. It does return that, but Pushpin doesn't use that in any way. Um, so building heights and things like that, you there's a field available for it, but it assumes that you have a way to measure that. It's just a kind of numeric field that, that uh, presents itself. Yes? What is the biggest thing that people are doing in Japan with this? It seems like there's a lot of edits. Yeah, um, mostly they, the question was about uh, about what J the Japanese community is doing with, with Pushpin. Um, if we connect later, I'll, I'll hook you up with Taiichi over here. He's the OSM Japan community lead. Um, he, uh, he could probably get more insight into that, but they've used it a lot on actual uh, disaster risk data collection and, and things like that and got their local community using it for things all over the country. Uh, mostly I think they just took it and started using it and really enjoyed it and there's a lot of them there that are into OSM, so. Yeah. Uh, Jason, I'm just curious, what's the 